All right, I will call us to order. This is a joint meeting between the select board and the school committee. And um, the time is 6.05 p.m. and we are called to order. Uh, first thing is to review and approve the minutes of January 17th, 2023. Uh, they look fine. Yeah, are there any uh, comments or revision to any of the minutes or no? Great, then uh, we can do a vote. Um, anybody want to? Uh, Someone second it, Michael. Will you second? Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so roll call. Um, Denise Storm. I approved. Yeah. Will Cantor. <clears throat> and yes. Michael Merritt. Uh, yes. All right. Next thing is the financial statements. And uh, we already signed warrants. Right. Yes. Uh, seven warrants were signed electronically, totaling $57,128.37. Uh, I did send you out the expense reports. There's no new concerns on the reports. There are some overages and budget lines. There are items we've talked about already, um, transportation being one. Um, right now, our heat, our fuel costs are up um, to heat the building. Uh, custodial line is over a little bit because of you know various needs outside of regular hours, whether that's snow removal and, and whatnot. But otherwise, we're in good shape. Um, to finish out the rest of the year. So unless you have questions, I don't have anything for FY23 to report on. No, it's not going to really blow too, too hot, too hard of a hole in the budget. No, it'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> we went over like $3,000 already, which is probably one of our fill ups, but you know, we're coming to the end of heating season and then mild. I think we have to move. All right. So, uh, um, Sarah, do you unmute it? I don't think she can mute because of the eye wall. Nope. Are you hearing feedback? Yeah. I am having an like, internet like here, so that might be, I'm not sure. It might be that's, Michael. There, it's you know, that computer has to be. It's do we need to unmute the financial right? thing? Yeah, that's okay. the one that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you'll you'll know because there's a red bar in the bottom. Of the owl will okay. show up and it's muted. Okay. Ooh. Thank you. Owl tips from the Owl Pro. It actually happened. Like, a little I didn't even know that. Okay. Right. Is there anything else about the financial statements we need to attend to? Not from my perspective. All right, uh, on to the next order of business, uh, the principal's report. Uh, <laughs> did you want to do public comment, Michael? Um, it's for some reason it, it's listed below the principal's report, but we could change the order. I would be fine with that. Sorry, sorry, the minutes, the minutes are off. Sorry. Okay, so. Um, I wanted to give everyone a mid-year report in terms of achievement, and we do several assessments mid-year just to show um, areas that we need to work on, areas of strength, areas of growth. And, you know, this is our sort of after the pandemic year. Um, so we've really been watching students grow very closely. And the, the sort of quickest, you know, not everything's based on a test, but sort of the quickest dip to stick is the NEWA for grades three to six. And um, really happy to report that currently we have 72% of our students where they need to be in math. Um, and com as compared to last year, where we had 70% of our students. So the one thing we were looking for is, are we gonna be close to where we were last year, knowing that we had a lot, of, lot to make up this year with the pandemic. So we're really pleased with that. And we feel that we have a really good handle on the 28% in terms of what students need. And we, we've identified those needs and we've readjusted staff as needed, as we do in January, typically monthly, really, sometimes weekly. Um, and then in the area of reading, we're at 73% of the students where they need to be. And last year, we were at 72% where students need to be. So we're really happy about um, 
the gaps coming to you know close. We still have gaps, of course, especially in the social emotional area. Mm -hmm. um, but um, very happy with with that. And again, it's one test, one moment in time. Well, actually, two tests. You can't put everything on that. But I'm feeling as the building principal in here in you know February that we are in a you know we are in a good spot um, compared to in terms of where we started at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. People are tired. People are working really, really hard, children and staff. And sometimes people talk about getting rid of February and April break and making a March break. And then two weeks before February break, we realize why we need a February break. <laughs> do you agree with me? I do. Totally. <laughs> um, school choices later on in the in the um, in the meeting. I wrote down some upcoming dates that are exciting. One thing that's very exciting, which I'm going to call you about, actually, I'm glad you're here, is that on Sunday, May 7th, we're going to have our annual 5K. The, um, we have a committee that's been doing that for a couple years now. And then the PTO, working with Conway Grammar School, we're going to have a big spring fling after um, the 5K. And we're going to have some food trucks and lots of things for the students to do and music. And we're going to make it a whole community event. So we're that really the food exciting. trucks at the town or, in, or here? Here at Conway, yeah, in the school. Because yeah. the, the, you're running in the in downtown. Yes. Downtown. Yes. Yes. The ball field. Yeah. Right. Yes. The metropolis. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> we're really excited about that. Um, so great things happening here at Conway. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Keep going, Michael. You're on a roll. Thank you. Um, all of this amazing work, Kristen, that you do every day with our amazing team uh, reminded me of a wonderful letter that we got. Um, uh -huh. I don't know. What do you think, Phil? Do, do people need to know about this letter? Uh -huh. <laughs> good, good news is always lovely. Some of us could really use good news like hardcore, like lots of good news. Um, I, guess yeah. it, I don't know if it would amount to public comment. I'll just summarize. Unless, unless Kristen's okay for it to be read. <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to do, Michael. That's very sweet of you. Very sweet. If he wasn't going to do it, I was going to do it. So I, know. Oh, good. I, I, so I get to do it. So, you get um, to do it. So we had uh, one of our wonderful teachers, Mr. B, write a wonderful letter to the school committee that says, um, you may already know this, but I wanted to take a minute to write about what a gem we have in our principal. And I thought I would send you a top 10 list to illustrate. Come on, please. If Kristen, 10, if Kristen had a meeting outside of the building, staff and students are sad. Legitimately sad. We miss her. Nine, she drives an hour each day to school and back. She loves the school enough to commute for 10 hours a week. Eight, she has an open door policy that she doesn't need. Why? because she's not in her office. She is in her <laughs> office every day. She, she's in her office on many a weekend. Seven, she creates and nurtures a climate of safety and educational growth for staff and students. Six, she actively supports and drives the professional development of staff, helping and challenging us to be our best and then a little bit better. Five, she continuously builds relationships with the children, keeping track of their educational and social emotional growth. Four, she maintains a positive attitude throughout the day, no matter the challenges that arise at home or work. Three, sharing her love of books and stories. She inspires a love of reading. Two, she puts up with my pranks. What other boss lets you wear an inflatable dinosaur costume to work? It's true. <laughs> and number one, she truly loves the children. Really nice. Very sweet. For your yeah. own staff member to thank you. take the time to do I that is a link. See if you're thank you. real Did honor. You He's just waiting for somebody to run. Oh, you have to do that. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. For it was an amazing that. thing to get. That was, that was so well read, too. That was just yeah. the, the perfect end. You're a good storyteller. Yeah, that was like really well done. Thank you. Well, thank you. Miss Principal Gordon deserves that, doesn't she? She totally does. Thank you. All right. Um, after the principal's report is the public comment section of our meeting. So if, is it okay if the public just 
the next item is the budget, and that's what the public's here for. So if it's okay, we just invite the public to discuss the budget when we're talking about the budget. So you want Shelley to present the budget and then the public to make yeah. their comment then? Yeah. Okay. We're all fine with that? You okay with that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm going to share my screen. And with us is the, the new member of the uh, Finance Committee, John Crane. John's principal, Kristen Gordon, business manager, finance guru, Shelly Pareto. Um, I have a couple of paper copies I brought to you. Do either of you want the paper? Sure. <laughs> okay. So this is the second uh, budget discussion for FY24 for Conway Grammar School. Our last meeting was on January 17th. Um, we presented a budget that showed an increase of, let me try to make this bigger for people. Let me do a little better. Um, 3.37%, which is just over $70,000. Uh, the, the main point that I wanna make in this as a reminder is that this budget was primarily level services. So mm -hmm. there were no new initiatives in here. We didn't ask for increases for new programming. We didn't ask for new creases, increases for new staff. Um, what we take into consideration first is our wage increases, contractual and non-contractual. And then we look at non-salary expenditures based on existing needs throughout the building. Um, so we had a minor increase, $10,000 increase in a bunch of uh, miscellaneous lines, transportation, facilities. Um, and if you look at our current year-to-date report, I did just talk about this in um, this year's budget update, some of these lines are currently over. <coughs> we have gone over for several years in those lines, and I'm asking us to right-side those numbers so that we can fully fund the line item. The only item in that 70000 that is not um, level service is the employee separation cost. We could argue that that is a recurring expense year to year. If you remember last year, it was much more significant. The town was kind enough to help us out. Um, one employee retiring a year or every other year is more typical. And I would encourage us, if this is not the year to do it, I would encourage us in a year where the town can financially support it to add it to our budget so that we're not constantly looking for ways to fund this $20,000. I know it does inflate the number, but it's one year of inflation, and then we have that money built in um, moving forward. Um, with that said, I know that there were some preliminary conversations. I know Veronique and Darius had a conversation um, about the town's finances, and um, my understanding of it is that the town would request that we come in lower than 3.37 if we can. Um, so I had posed you know, the question here and next steps of, is 3.37 a comfortable position? Where do we want to be if it's going to be lower? I gave you just a reference point there. If we were to come in at 3% on the nose, it's $7,500 reduction. I'm confident we could find ways to cover $7,500 um, to bring that down slightly. <coughs> Excuse me. And then there's just that historical information on the bottom there of what our budgets have been for increases over the last three years. So. Um, 3.37 is certainly not outside of the realm of where the school has been in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a, a reasonable number, um, but also understand that, you know, the town only has so many resources. So uh, I guess that'll be part of our next steps in conversation. Well, and so much of this is driven by uh, COLA increases that are contractual to union negotiations or driven by the economy and supplies. Correct. I had written down that um, from last month's meeting that the the um, employee separation cost <coughs> item that there is a that you're contemplating the use of the revolving fund for that. And could you explain what that is and what <coughs> what the drawbacks of doing that are and what the benefits are? Um, so at this point, I wouldn't recommend that we use any revolving funds. We could use school choice. Um, we have a good school choice balance, but it, and 
use of school choice money for those one-time expenses is a good use of funds. Um, Conway does have ESSER three grant money available still. So what my recommendation would be if we wanted to drop off that 20,000, which is one percentage point, that we uh, put some salaries and wages on ESSER, which is an allowable expenditure, cover the sick buyback out of the budget. It's basically just, you know, sort of fluffing the numbers a little bit and making it work financially. Um, and then we could come in at 2.37 if we were to pull that off. The risk with that is that if someone retires next year, we have to find a spot to fund that 20,000. So it'll be a repeat conversation potentially, unless the town is in a better position to support a little bit higher of an increase of over 3%. Um, I'm not aware of anything in the pipeline. Obviously things can change, but <coughs> you know we have a great uh, special education program here. Um, so we don't anticipate any major increased costs for out of district placements like some of our other schools do have to face. I know, knock on wood. Knock on wood yeah. um, Transportation costs continue to rise with fuel costs rising, um, but we do have that factored in here as well. Oh. <coughs> in a, sorry, to, but okay. in a uh, bit of news that's related, but not particularly on point, but it's related. The bridge is open today. I was wondering. Oh, good. Today it opened. Oh, good. Oh, that's great. So, um, right. so the, the bus, the, the bus fuel <laughs> charges should end as of yep, today. Three months and two weeks. Incredible Amazing. how quick that was. And a bus can go across it. Yeah, it's ready to go. It's actually wider than the previous by wow. a couple feet. Next to a good neighbor, right? <laughs> so, sorry, well, that's sorry, okay. That's, but you wanted you you want to know that too. So. Yeah. Um, so my point in saying that was that I don't expect that we are going to see significant increases in the next few years. You know, our staffing is pretty well set. Mm -hmm. Um, if someone leaves, you know, there's potential for budget savings because we can save and where their placement is on the salary schedule. Um, but there's nothing coming in the pipeline that we've talked about that's going to significantly grow the budget in years to come. So, um, well, we're still maintaining our facility. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the quality of education we provide. Right. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, I am the last person to pressure the school to. <laughs> reduce the budget um but on the, on this employee separation cost um i do the, the i do, you know i feel good about doing it just because last year last year the town was there for for five, six employees it was 121,000, and we the select board voted to use the arpa money for it which was a good use for it um and um but this year and last year the town budget was was really really good budget uh this year um, the town is really pretty terrified about the budget. Uh, I mean, I know I personally am because we're 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 going to be hard pressed to keep it under double digit, like with that. Just nothing to do with the school. Just right. um, and the uh, um, it, we, we got hammered with the six percent in health insurance, the fuel, mm -hmm. the cost of aggregate materials. The now the retirement's going to go up. Um, like all, transfer station. Transfer station. Yes, thank you. I mean, but there's just. Um, we're getting we're getting hit from all sides. Yeah. And, um, the, the well, and is there a way like we put money away for capital improvements to put money away for retirements? Mm -hmm. So is we that allowed or there would be. You can always set up special accounts, <coughs> special revenue accounts, because you always know they're coming and then they hit you like a truck. Yeah. So we're a little bit restricted to what types of stabilization or revolving funds we can set up as a school. Okay. I think there's some differences between what, what the town can set up and what we can set up, but we can use school choice essentially like it's our free cash. So okay. the, if we did have extra end of year funds in any of these years, which I often give Kristen the liberty of using to buy additional classroom supplies, materials, furniture, things that we don't normally budget for that you know, say our substitute line is under by $5,000, um, we could talk about that and move that into school choice, earmarking it for future expenses related to mm -hmm. separation costs. Yeah. Um, that would be the easiest way for us to go. Well, it makes sense, then you're not like blindsided by a, a retirement. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hearing two things. One is that there's some ESSER funds that can be applied uh, toward certain expenses. And then um, 
we would be able to use the school choice funds in a way this year to move things around to address the separation cost. And then um, and let's also hear from the public and see what they have to, to suggest. Oh, right. Yes, absolutely. Sure. <laughs> I just to, <laughs> well, I just wanted to give the, the, the context for the difference between last year and, and this year. Last year, our general fund, uh, aside from the schools, all the schools, was 0.1% <clears> or $2,736. This year, we're already looking at, in requests, 260000 so it's 9%. So you can see how, yeah, we're a little... And what's the driver of that? <clears throat> Almost all of it, as Phil was saying, it has a lot to do with the price of fuel, which drives up the price of so many other things, our materials. To give an example, um, I think it was gravel that went from 18 a ton to 29 a ton. <coughs> Excuse me. And actually, we're feeling the pinch right now, just like you are, with some of the lines being overspent, because it's not like it happens on a fiscal year. You know, it comes up before that. Um, also, the health care costs have gone up. There's some loans where we're paying, so... Yeah. So we're going to move toward electric vehicles? <laughs> well, we can certainly talk about that. <laughs> we, I was just on with the fur coat today why, about why be at the transportation. Mercy of oil companies. Right. But it actually, if you put in an EV station, you're actually paying, the town pays for it right now. So it's not a good time for us to put in an EV station. But yeah. If you have solar to run the EV station. Yeah. <laughs> The well, it has to do with the fact that they're a fixed price contract the town is obligated, which are run by basically, basically monopoly companies that are raising their prices. And there's no other choices, including gravel, which is being consolidated too. And it gets all that. It's what's going on. Can we make our own gravel pit in common? Well, it's been bought, but uh, yeah. Instead of, <laughs> instead of recess, we can have children do the gravel pit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something out of Dickens, but, but the, no, the main thing actually is the lack of new growth, and it's something which common congressman, the governor was here earlier in the week, and we uh, shared a lot of concern. There's just a lot of unfairness in that we're a small town, we have a few very wealthy people in this town who claim Conway as their uh, primary residence on their federal tax returns and state tax returns. And with the way formula funding is done for Chapter 7 to Chapter 90, we're really getting hurt. And uh, it's not fair, but, you know, we can't, we can't beat up uh, we're little, little puppets. We can't beat up the, uh, the giant, which is state government, how they do things. And, of course, we can make comments to State Representative Blay, State Senator Mark, but, uh, you know, those are they're, they're one people amongst many, you know. It's really the lack of growth. Lack of growth into our, our, people. our revenues and our, our rateables. You know, the, we have a 200. Here's our gold. Our pot of gold is we have 270 million dollars approximately of rateables in this town. There's only so much we can hit it up every year, and uh, you know, with the lack of new growth. What does the solar farm in town generate? No, uh, no, yeah, nothing. It does. Yes. No, it does. It's it's, it's um. It, it's, <coughs> it's, 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 six, it's almost $60,000 a year. In yeah. pilot, oh, oh, oh yeah. with that, it's I thought a, you meant because it isn't it's turned It's a 20 year right set now. pilot yeah. payment okay, schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this year, it's yes. 60 yeah. something thousand. Yes. Year now. And, uh, Even though well, it's not generating electricity. You know, I, I, to give you a preview of the letter I wrote for the, for the town annual newsletter, meeting letter, um, I'm open for suggestions. It really comes down to the lack of new growth. There's no one getting fat off the hog here, so to speak. Mm -hmm. it's, it's lean and mean. You mentioned about. The operating budget, I look, well, what about the building, the boiler? I mean, looking at all these costs that are going up. So, well, that's what, what we plan for all the time. Is yeah. That's why we started a fund to replace yeah. big things that might go. So right. suddenly it's not we're yeah. holding our hand out for yeah. a new boiler because we put money away for that. And yeah. we were actually the first school committee that started that process. Yeah. The only. I don't the know. Only. Oh, still yeah. the only. Yeah. Ages ago because... We didn't want to come yeah. to the town with our hand out for a whole new, you know, well, we've gone through a well, we've gone through a boiler, the yeah. age of the school is such, you know, that yeah. things are going to go. Yeah, you know? it's really good that way. And of course, you know, our other three towns have industrial parks and they have commercial <laughs> zones and we don't. It's a real problem. It's a real yeah. challenge for us. The town's new growth this year was 1.9%. That's it. The lowest that I've recalled in quite some time. 
in the face of inflation. So, so what do you need from the school budget? Well, I think being really careful in terms of setting up buyouts for, um, if we don't have ARPA, ARPA money was a one-time gift, and that was great for last year, so we really keep our taxes down. Have we used all our ARPA money? Uh, the answer is no, but, uh, you know, the ARPA money is also meant for other projects, and believe me, we're, we're more than lined up for requests to exceed the balance, which is like 400, 300,000, something down, close to 400,000. Uh, 405. Yeah. And uh, we watch our pennies like hawks here, but... Really, what it comes down to is setting up funds and anticipating as much as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, we added a school adjustment, extra school adjustment council a few years ago. We're the only of the four towns that did it. And that was a wise move. You know, I'm totally for that. And having a door that went through here on a 504 and IEP, I very much appreciate that. And I wouldn't dare want to get rid of that either. Well, with so social emotional development, one of yeah. the hardest things hit by a pandemic yeah. or school age kids you know, you know and we have promised that maybe after it's an three investment years, in your own community if yeah. these people stay I'm, in your community you talk about maybe not which is years, the goal a few years getting rid of it i don't think it's a wise idea to get rid of it ever really maybe. right so i don't know main thing is a lack of new growth in this idea the ideas would be other ways i don't know yeah. we talked with congressman uh, mcgovern about grants you know, we need a grant advocate around here. We look the bigger school systems have professionals that do this. You know, we don't, we're all volunteers, right? Right. No, it's actually a, a huge thing, you know. Yes. There is money out there. We talked about an act of Congress to allow to to allow for the four towns to regionalize fully K through twelve. Oh. <clears throat> Well, the don't want to re like, regionalize their grammar schools. Yeah, so I, I, I'm from that. New Jersey originally, and I talked about county governments and executives have just added another layer of layer of management on top. And the goal, the golden uh, panacea of uh, reduced overhead, quite the opposite. Yeah, right. Regionalization is an oversold bill of goods. Well, we as a school committee are happy to work with the town. The the thing is, we also are completely committed to investing in what we have here sure. as it is also an attraction for people to move to town mm -hmm. and it's also an attraction for school choice and once you start talking about reducing or or restricting or whatever with what the gem of your town is then people start running to things like out of district placements which are very expensive and they think oh my kid's not going to get what they need in this town when they absolutely can get better than what their kid needs in this town. But once you start putting a broad message out there, like, oh, we're ratcheting back that school budget, or we're doing this or that, educated people start you know, thinking, oh, my kid's not gonna get what they need at that school, so I'm gonna go to this placement or that placement that costs us you know, $200,000 a year. You know, So I'm always very careful about the language and how we talk about investing in our school because it it's, very wise to invest in our school and right. school choice is also something that attracts another revenue stream to our school and the special ed programs we have attracts another special education stream to us which is revenue um which allows us to afford to have the best education to me in the area i know i'm a little biased but having both my kids gone through here i, but, I have a question the uh I call them a capitation fees for uh, school choice. Are they? Are there any? Is there any talk of increasing That's that? That's a great all? question. It's still five thousand. That is a mean, great can we, question. Can we do a call up for that? So it's five thousand unless the student is receiving special education services on mm -hmm. an IEP, and then we get that back dollar for dollar if yeah. they're receiving yeah. specialized services. But um, I, to Elaine's point, just so that people understand how important these other revenues are for us. Our IAs, every IA is funded outside of general fund. Mm -hmm. If we did not have school choice revenue and if we did not have such a strong special education program, you'd be talking about how many IAs do you have? Another at least 10, right? Yeah. I think it's maybe between 10 and 12, yeah. maybe. You know, that's another hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars on your budget. So yeah. those pieces are really important that we maintain yeah. the level of education mm -hmm. services that we're providing mm -hmm. in order to keep mm -hmm. being an attractive. So I, have a, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Martin, <coughs> made a comment about a month ago. You can have this for me. But there was sixty-three thousand dollars that was going to be transferred from the Sped Revolving Fund to the town. Remember that? It was something that Jan Warner had suggested. 
It was from Mike Coachella, our accountant. There was a sped, the sped, there's money from 63,000 from the sped revolving fund. I vaguely remember that, but it's yeah. details, oh, yeah, details are very hazy. Well, I'm just thinking that, you know, for a <coughs> time buy up, it's, it's been to the down. I mean, I thought if anything that goes to the schools to stay with the school, you know, that could be something to capitalize another uh, stabilization fund. Do you know about that fund, Sean? Sure. Long term capital improvements and then operating things like buy ups, which are going to come up. Right? I think our the, town finance the, first. The line, the the line between school and town is off is often really blurry. If you ask me, um, in, in, in the 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 school yeah, yeah, there. right, right. It's it, but, um, and we fully reconciled with the town, the school's books, with um, Michael's books, and mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't recall anything. Right. Mm -hmm. no. I mean, we do, else. we do often. <coughs> Sorry, I have literally been coughing since January first. Um, Happy New Year! I know. Uh, we sometimes ask him to move money around between oh, okay. our various funds. You know, right. if we reclassify something or change an expenditure, um, but it would just be moving one expense from yeah. a certain fund to another. Shuffling one part to the other. Okay. Yeah. You know, I think our strike as the public and the finance committee would be, you know. Colas for you know, adjusting for school or choice and that kind of thing. Well, you, you know, I mean, people are sending their kids here, or, you know, getting a very good value, that's for sure. They really are. And that that is a great question. Can we push our representatives on changing yeah. that? That I mean, that hasn't changed in yes, several five, years I, at least. How long? So at least I, I actually have had the discussions with them about yeah, this and that this uh, is it, it, I think it's as long as I've it's, been on it's deemed to be a very heavy like lift because the the sending districts are you are the most populous communities with the most votes yeah um and and the sending districts are the ones that are being asked to you know that's when you say give the receiving districts more it's this <laughs> it's the sending They're and paying, and, paying. and that's really you know it oh but inflation has in, influenced yeah. everything else why not does it not influence this um be, because these are the communities that are, it's that, that they are perpetually financially strapped they never have the money to, to pay more make your but, schools better and you wouldn't have no. people's school choice now well don't forget there is an expense to the town for choice going out as well because right. the well, town is so, so assessed that amount kind of so because inflation is inflation we would see additional money here at the school directly if they increase the rate, but your costs would be higher for it. So it's sort of a catch-22. I'm also short. saying that as somebody that works in Holyoke, Chicopee, Springfield, and Westfield. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I know what those districts try hard to do. Yeah. But, and it's having, you know, making sure that this school is the best it can possibly be is that it actually creates it's strategy it, it's it creates wealth for every single homeowner in this community. <laughs> it increases your property values and and you know i to, just in this past week i met two families that are in the process of moving here one from west hampton one from uh connecticut and um be, one was because of zillow says conway schools are the best and um one because everybody they, knows that and and one because they heard conway schools are the best yeah. and they're purchasing homes um then when i see someone buying a house i always stop and ask oh good thank you yes but they're still i mean we're very careful but, people for dinner. But they're sure, to each yeah. each each of them with two kids each of them come into conway grammar school yeah. I, I guess from from where i sit um you know last year we were we were able because we had arpa to help out with this and so that was a one-time thing. Personally, I'm hoping that this, you know, potential ask for the twenty-one thousand is a one-time thing, just because this year is looking so bad. It's not something that I would see as a, you know, going forward. You know what I mean? It just it's just with that a nine percent increase, we're all going to have to tighten our belts as much as we can this year. So. Well, we can definitely work with you. So that would put us around 2.37 and just over $50,000 That'd be amazing. That'd yeah, be that amazing. would be amazing. So, Any other discussion? Questions? Well, just about the capital, capital side, because I'm, I'm concerned about that through the infrastructure of the school. 
<clears throat> are there any um, how when's the last time you updated the expense for replacing our boiler? And I just want to make sure because there's been a lot of <clears throat> inflationary creep in. Is there going to be the need for putting it's just like 235,000 now in the uh, yeah. stabilization fund? I mean, is there any? I think we did more? have an estimate on that uh, uh, last I'm year. Looking at the list. As yeah. I recall, it's like 125 each or something. There's Before two we boilers. talk about capital, can I just make a point of clarity for my own sake of yeah. my work for the next meeting? So school committee would like to go into public hearing reducing the budget by 21000 to cover the employee separation costs from another fund. Is I that believe correct? So. That would be lovely. Michael, you good with that? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. The public hearing right now is scheduled for March 16th. Um, Darius did say that if we're not comfortable following the public hearing up with a vote immediately at the school committee after, we could schedule another school committee meeting just to vote on the budget. Just FYI. I think we're good. Okay. All right. Um, and on the capital list, let me just see. If we do do assessments every year <coughs> and quotes regularly, so we don't just stick with a quote from however many years ago we started the stabilization fund. But I know we did take some money out of the stabilization fund when we did the well stuff. Yes, the well, yeah. um, which was way more expensive than we anticipated it being. Wells and flooring upgrades and uh, right. a couple of water fountains. Yeah. Do you have sorry, do you have the same issue that we do? Like we, even if we were to order a new vehicle today, it's a year and a half to two years out. It's the same thing with the boiler. Ask about our generator. Or the, yeah. yeah, we don't even have the yeah. generator the yet. The generator? So. Oh, oh really? two oh years gosh. ago. Oh, yeah. Two years ago. Wow. I know. It's oh, my goodness. Here? No. And Frontier um, has been trying to order a new van since July of 2020. I think we yeah, approved yeah. we we proved that in the 2020 school year. Um, you and know the, there's a member yeah, that is a, a, because yeah. I'm just wondering for all of us as we generate. go forward with our budgets because this is happening everywhere. Yeah. Um, if we're going to all kind of have to have in our heads that okay, when we actually finally get the order yeah. in, yeah. the cost is going to have gone up. So we need to have yeah. some kind of buffer for those things that we've already ordered. <laughs> Or, so or the really generator new. update is supposed to be delivered in May of 2023. Wow. Yeah. Well, what, do you know the brand? To, well, I from don't. March to May in three months or four months. Yeah. But it, do they, they honor keep... the original quote? No. They no. don't. No, right. they no that's say. the problem. That's what I'm saying is that no. it goes out and the cost them. keeps going up. Oh. oh. You know? They're usually not valid for longer than 90 days. Oh. They don't manufacture it until you order and pay for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they manufacture it in China. And then they ship it, and then then they tell you how much you have to pay. Yeah, right. and we can't prepay, so yeah. they yeah. they get us exactly. there. So I don't actually see the boiler on the capital list. There are some other larger projects, such as replacing the walk-in cooler, um, upgrading the kitchen hood and the cafeteria. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, the projects remaining are relatively small, and when I say that, I'm saying under fifteen thousand outside of the AC request. Um, that Darius asked me to talk about for this year from the stabilization fund, um, which I think when you sent that report last, we were around 250,000. Right, and Darius and I spoke about that, and I think that was the number that we wanted to make sure was our baseline, no matter what, in case we had to replace the boilers right away, because the thought was they were 125 apiece. So clearly we okay. should probably bump that up too, and if we're gonna need more for more <coughs> projects, you know. Well, I know there's and been the some projects, still work. and, and we and we use one. Like we use one, and the other one's a backup. And the chances of you losing both of them, the catastrophic loss, yeah. um, is is really low. Yeah. 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 For that stabilization okay. account was I know Darius thought it was supposed to be 150, but he might have been remembering wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, and there have been years where we've <coughs> taken money out since I've been here and haven't fully replenished it. Yeah. So, I think last year we, <coughs> we put in 50, but we took out more, right? Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, I think we yeah. took out like 82 or something. Yeah. 71. Yeah. 71. Um, so for this year. So to go back to the boiler question, I can make sure that this is on our radar with Phil Hildreth. 
to make sure that those big facility systems pieces are on our list. Um, make sure we know how old they are, how frequently they're being serviced, that kind of thing. Um, so I'll put that on the list for us. And then for uh, the 24 request, uh, we had talked last meeting, like, yes, let's put something in. Um, so the request would be to use 32,000 from the stabilization fund to do AC in the remaining four classrooms. That number could be less if there are rebates and incentives like there were with this last round that we did, but we don't know what those would be at this point. Um, I think we're getting about 40% back from the last round of work that we did. So that could get put directly back into the stabilization fund when we get, yeah. get the rebate. Right. And then we have the request for the stage curtain under CPA. Um, bedroom lights off. Vicki, you're not muted. Yeah. Kristen, you probably have the power to mute people. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, there she is. Okay. Um, the other two projects he wanted me to mention, and we do not have to decide this right now as a school committee, we could bring it back up next month, but given we do have ESSER funds remaining while we're talking about using some of it for this year's budget, um, Kristen has a request in for some use for um, primarily stipends for PD, uh, curriculum planning, really making sure that teachers are taken care of for doing that extra work throughout the building. And then um, it'll help offset some of our uh, new initiatives for curriculum materials for next year that we're putting in place, um, help pay for summer programming, it'll help pay for the equity audit. So we have the money allocated, um, not entirely, but we only have another 15 months or so to spend right. it. So. Um, we're talking about the idea of tackling two more projects that are on the list, um, one being another set of classroom flooring and then partitions in uh, a set of the boys and girls bathrooms. Yay, you finally <laughs> get your partitions. <laughs> That's just the one thing I hear about every year because the bathroom is right up for town meeting. And somebody goes in there and says, you know what, you know what these stalls look like in here? I'm like, <laughs> yay. Yeah. So that's yeah. the plan there. Um, I think what we'll do with the ESSER funds is continue to map out the budget a little bit further, talk with Bill about timeline on those projects, yeah. see, you know, could one get done this summer and one get done next summer because we have until September of 24 to spend. So, um, but that would be two good things that we take off the list that then we don't have to go to our stabilization fund for. Great. Um, but if we uh, want to have a vote of approval on the request for 32000 on this year's warrant. Um, I don't think you actually have to vote on it, but just your stamp of approval to move that forward. And that. I think the capital stuff is the town that does that, that moves the, yeah, right. Yeah, we yeah. would just submit to the recommend. That. Do we recommend we move that forward, the, the capital? The AC and the four remaining classrooms of $32,000. Yeah. Um, I, that's... Yes. It's a separate decision then about how much the town wants to put right. back into that stabilization right. fund and what the impact right. of that is. Um, Michael, are you good with moving that forward? I I am, yep. We're we're in support of that. I, I just gave me a no. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I, 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 asked I didn't see the nod. I didn't see the nod. I didn't see the nod. I should have realized, of course, of there course would be a nod. Of course, we communicated. Shelly, as, as I recall, the capital list was also prioritized, right, for the things yes. that you really, and those, that, the AC was clearly, yes. Yeah. yeah. Especially now that we're doing summer programming, too. Right. And with global warming, and it's hot in here in April. And we've had, you know, humidity issues in the, yeah. I'm thinking there may have been at least one year where there was a humidity concern and having AC will help maintain the building itself, so. Well, and, and speaking as somebody who works with emergency management and this is our shelter, it's not a bad idea exactly. as well. That's yeah. why I yeah. keep pushing on the generator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Elaine, yeah. you may know better than I because of your years of experience leading these meetings. Um, mm -hmm. But as we move through the agenda, public comment, in, are we in the unfinished business at this point of the 
FY24 budget and capital projects? The, the honest answer to that, Michael, is that the beauty of being a chair is that you actually have the authority to move around <laughs> move items. Move it on. Move <laughs> around <laughs> items as you see fit. Right. I, I think our, right. no, I think no. our, our public <laughs> seems commented <laughs> out. So, no, yes. I think that was my big question. Are we? Um, is there any more public comments? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Good. Oh, thank yeah. you. I really appreciate that you all were able to attend tonight. I, I thank you for that. Thank you for, for a pay increase for you all next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as much as the finance committee is here. Yeah, we'll spend it all in one place. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so after public comment is our unfinished business uh, matters. Uh, FY24 budget and capital projects. Are there any other components of that that we need to discuss tonight? I think we just covered them. Okay. Just making sure. All right. Uh, then we're on to new business, which is the school choice participation and approval. And that is for a vote. That's right. Um, I, we are opening up school choice um, in all grade levels, and we have applications for all grade levels sitting in my desk now. Um, so we have uh, we have uh, sixth grade. We have eight school choice going out, and um, I can foresee that we're going to be making up those eight, which would be great. So we're going to open them in all grade levels with your approval. And Kristen did send us that ahead of time for a review. Thanks. Yeah, I'll move to approve that. Okay. And do we have a second? Yep, yeah. oh, great. Um, the, I just wanted to say that the, the uh, nice ones, sorry, taking minutes. Um, when school choice really works is when, in the only way it works, benefits the school is when you don't have to add extra classes that, yeah. that you're just, exactly. you know, um, filling up classes that you already have, which right. is the case, which is why it works so well. Right, it gives us a, a wonderful, diverse, um, each of yeah. our grade level classrooms is a wonderful community in and of itself. So it's, it's a wonderful contribution. Um, great, so sounds like it'll be kind of a, a level exchange as people graduate and new people come in. Excellent. Um, um, so, Sounded like we had a motion and a second, uh, so that means we've moved to a vote. Uh, Denise? Aye. Bill? Yes. Elaine? Yes. And Michael, yes. All right. Um, on to reports. Uh, Elaine, do you have a report, a chair report? I do not. Okay. Uh, and Denise, how about a report from the collaborative? Um, I did send the executive director report and the um, report of what's happened in the past year that just came out in January to all of you school committee yeah. members. So lots going on at the collaborative. They have a lot going on. Yeah, it's hard to summarize. So I find it easiest just to send it to you. Totally. Some light reading. Yeah, probably should have sent it to you too, Kristen, but I didn't. I will. I can. Oh, great. Thanks. I always love to see Yeah. Well, I'm excited to hear that they have a lot of uh, new and things going on there that they, uh, I remember when I served on there a couple of years ago that uh, they were <laughs> a transition and now they have a new director that they found, which is uh, after. Awesome. They're doing a lot of social emotional PD too, aren't they? Professional development. Yeah. yeah. We're all going to start meeting in person this next meeting. Oh, well, at least you get dinner time. then. The one thing I know. So that'll be the first time for me. The one so, thing I know. Yeah. Yeah. The buildings and. Yeah. Yeah. The, the previous director who was there for a long time, I, I like that guy. Um, he no. was really, he was really into public advocacy and was, was the biggest um, opinion writer for all of our newspapers. Like every week he was publishing yeah, stuff yeah. and always just really the yeah. timely education issues. And I think, our region is missing like that voice that, that, well, the that, that is like really out there was every kind week. of on a turning point where they could have really fallen off as importance and yeah. then they got the dmh contract and instead went 
statewide mm -hmm. like they really like they were teetering and they had enough vision to move forward in a big way which i think was pretty impressive for something right. No, it's something like 42 districts that they work with. Or, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a large number. I don't know if that's the right number, but it's quite a lot. Well, um, yeah. well, that's exciting that they are continuing their mission and, and on to new things. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, and then did Darius have a superintendent report tonight? He sent us one. Um, so I did, I did review it. Um, I think we yeah. can all review it at our, uh, but he did send one out. And it was sort of summarizing a bunch of what's in motion. But. Right. Yeah. We have the big meeting coming up next month for okay. that's kind of all that leading to. All right. Um, well, I don't believe there's anything for executive session tonight. And that concludes our agenda. So oh. if uh, we have a motion to adjourn, I would entertain that. I'll make the motion. Second. Excellent. And uh, I don't think that's when we have to vote, right? We just end our session. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Michael, yeah, for the, stepping the in. Select board meeting is also adjourned on account on the last one. Yeah. <laughs>